Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to go over the method of initial rates, which is a different approach to solving kinetics problems. In the following couple of videos we'll look at examples, but this first part is an overview of the problem solving method. Our objectives include predicting the concentration and time values of reactions using first and second order integrated rate laws, to graph data to identify the order of a reaction, and to correctly use some of these terms like half-life, first order reaction, and second order reaction. On our first objective, just want to make note that we're going to be looking at equations um, that are known as the integrated rate laws. And the idea with these equations is that if we are given all but one of the variables that go into that equation, we should be able to solve for that one unknown. So even though these equations will be solved already for one of the variables, we might need to use algebra to rearrange the equation in order to get the variable or the value that we need. In general chemistry, most of the kinetics problems that you'll be given will fall into one of these two categories. It's you're either looking for a rate law following the method of initial rates, or you're asked to work some sort of integrated rate law problem. With the method of initial rates, you are going to be given a data table that looks something like this. It'll say experiment in the first column and it'll tell you which run you're on, one, two, three, etc. And then you'll be given concentration data. So the molarity of one chemical, maybe the molarity of another chemical if there's more than one reactant. And then the last column will be the uh, numerical value for the initial rate. The other type of problem, these integrated rate law problems, when they give you a data table, they are going to give you different data. They are going to give you time in one column, and they're going to give you concentration in another column. Notice that we're introducing a new variable here with time. So when you start seeing time thrown into these problems, it's probably an integrated rate law problem. Uh, the approach that we will take with these problems is to take the concentration data and plot it. And we're also going to do some mathematical manipulations of the data. We'll also take the natural log of the concentration and plot that versus time. And we'll take the reciprocal of the concentration and plot that versus time. Um, depending on which of those three graphs is most linear, that will tell us whether it's a zero order reaction, a first order reaction, or a second order reaction. And that's the type of problem we're beginning now. So how do you know which approach to use? If this is an experimental problem, really the nature of the reaction itself and the equipment you have available to you in the lab will determine which approach you use for finding the rate law. If you're working problems, it's a little bit simpler. Um, if your data looks like this, you've got you know, the experiments, one, two, three, and then you have some concentration data, and then you have rate data, that's going to be an initial rates problem. But if you're given data that says time in one column and concentration in another column, it's going to be an integrated rate law problem. Let's be sure that we're all on the same page. When you see square brackets around the formula for a chemical, the square brackets mean molarity. If we take those square brackets and we put a subscript of T on them, that will mean the molarity at some time T. And if we do the same square brackets, but now instead of T, we say zero, then that means the uh, molarity at the start of the experiment when time is equal to zero. This is usually read a naught, so that, that subscript of a zero is read as naught. So I guess in order to make that match, if A is in the middle of these brackets, um, we would read that as a naught. So when we're doing these integrated rate law problems, we're going to need to make three graphs. 
the first graph, it's really hard to read this axis, this is actually showing us the concentration of the chemical over time. So the horizontal axis on all three of these is time. In the second graph, what we're seeing is actually the natural log of the same data from the first graph. And in the third graph, it's the reciprocal of the concentration data that's shown in the first graph. You'll notice that one of these, the middle one, has the data points line up very nicely with the line of best fit. I used Excel to create these graphs, and then I had Excel generate a line of best fit using a mathematical algorithm. Um, so the middle one, has data points that fall very nicely on the line. The first one and the third one, um, the data points are close to a line, but they're nowhere near as linear as the middle one. If the log plot is the one that's linear, then we're going to call this a first order reaction. Now, if instead of this log plot being the most linear. Let's say the reciprocal plot was the most linear. If that one had been most linear, then instead of first order, it would be second order. And if the just plain old concentration plot, the first one on this page, had been the most linear, then it would have been a zero order. This is typically what you'll see when you do a plot. Two of the plots, you can tell by eyeballing them, are um, curves and one of the plots will be much more linear. That tells you what the order is. Every once in a while you can't tell just by eyeballing and there's some statistics that we can run to get something called a correlation coefficient and we'll look at those correlation coefficients in just a moment but they'll help us determine mathematically which one of the plots is most linear. All right so if you have a zero order reaction, the rate law, like we've been writing in the previous problems, says that the rate is equal to k times a to the zero. Well, anything raised to the zero power is just one, so that simplifies to simply k, since a to the zero is one. If you do some calculus on this equation and you integrate this with respect to time, you end up with this next equation, which says a sub t is equal to minus kt plus a naught. Now, you don't need to know anything about calculus to work this problem because calculus was used to get this equation, and this equation is, is provided to you. It is on the formula chart that you will get to use on the test and on the final exam. So this zero order integrated rate law is not something you have to memorize, um, and you don't need to be able to do any calculus. However, you will need to do some algebra with it. Um, now that we have this equation, if I give you all of these variables except for one, you should be able to solve for the missing one. So for instance, if I give you a naught and k and a sub t, you should be able to solve for the time at which the a sub t, the concentration at time t, has uh, reached a certain value. If it's a first order reaction, then we would write the rate law as the rate is equal to k times the concentration of a raised to the first power, but we usually don't write exponents of 1. If you do some calculus here and integrate with respect to t, you end up with this next equation. The natural log of a sub t is equal to minus kt plus the natural log of a naught. And once again, if you're given all but one of these values, you should be able to solve the equation for the missing value. Then last but not least, we have the second order reaction. For our second order rate law, we have the rate is equal to k times a squared. And if we integrate that with respect to t, we get 1 over a sub t is equal to kt plus 1 over a naught. Now what I want to point out to you is that all of these integrated rate laws have the form y equals mx plus b. Um, x in all of these cases is time, and m varies. m for a zero order reaction is the concentration itself. 
y for a first order reaction is the natural log of the concentration. And for a second order reaction, y would be the reciprocal of the concentration. Now, regardless of what order it is, there's something really important about the slope, right? So the slope is that term that's going to be multiplied by t. I'm going to just draw a box around what's multiplied by t in each of these three equations. For zero and first order, t is multiplied by minus k, where k is the rate constant. And for a second order, t is multiplied by k. So to make a general statement about this, I'm saying that our rate constant will be given by the absolute value of the slope. In this equation that I just drew a box around, those vertical bars mean the absolute value. So whatever number you have for the slope, just turn it into a positive number. That's what happens when you take the absolute value. And so the absolute value of the slope will give you the uh, rate constant for the experiment. Remember, in terms of our symbols, uh, A naught is our initial concentration, A sub t is the concentration at time t, and if you make all three of these plots, whichever plot is closest to a line will tell you the reaction order. So if the concentration plot is closest to being a line, we know it's a zero order reaction. But if instead the log plot is closest to a line, then it's a first order reaction. And if the reciprocal plot is closest to a line, it will be a second order reaction. Let's compare the information that is contained in the equation for a rate law versus the equation for an integrated rate law. In a rate law, our equation will say rate is equal to Ka squared, for instance. It doesn't have to be squared. The, the orders can be different numbers, but that's just an example. Um, so what we are seeing in a rate law is an equation that tells us what the rate is as a function of concentration. In the integrated rate law, it gets to be a little bit more complicated because now we have introduced time. And so the integrated rate laws give us information about the concentration as a function of time. The rate itself doesn't actually appear in an integrated rate law. Instead, we have concentration and time. Our objectives for this video were to predict the concentration and time values of reactions using first and second order integrated rate laws. We also introduced the zero order rate law. We were using graphical data to determine the order of a reaction, and we were looking at the terms first order reaction and second order reaction. Um, we did not get to half-life. Half-life will be in a later video. The next video following this one will actually work some examples of problems using the integrated rate law method.